Hi everybody. Um, it's me again, obviously, since you're watching my my show. Um, I was watching a video uh, from Shannon Green, and she was showing a project. It's kind of like you know how you start five or six things at once, but you never finish them, and you move on to something else, but you always want to get back to them. Well, she had a way to organize that, and I wanted to share that with you. I'll link her video down at the bottom when I'm done. Um, so you can see, you know, the original, because this is not my idea. I didn't even know this existed. What she did was she picked up these, there's 10 of them in this package right here. Okay, I just got mine in the mail last week. All right. And there's zipper. They've got a zipper on them. It'll zip all the way across. Yep, he's whistling. I'm probably whistling because I'm... Still missing my front teeth. <laughs> so one of the projects I'm having, stop, because I'm not going to be able to get through this if you don't. Um, what? <laughs> is I'm working on a glue book, okay? And it's just for a long time before I even got into crafting, okay? I would see something in a magazine that I really, really liked, and I would keep just that image. And when I was done with the magazine, I would throw it out. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to keep all the extra bulk. I only wanted to keep, like, the recipes or, or the outdoor home projects, things like that. But I kept them all in, like, page protectors in a binder. And I thought, well, that's not really going to do me any good because I'm not really doing anything with them. So I was watching, uh, I think, Caged Fish. Uh, she was working on a glue book. And I'll link that one in the bottom. I can find it too. So just to let you know, I'm not stealing anybody's ideas. I'm just sharing what I've learned. And um, so I started. I tried to keep, you know, keep it kind of monochromatic with uh, the colors that are fairly the same, the different shades. Um, and you'd be really, really surprised at what you can find. Let me move this because I think there's some glare there. There we go. You can find um, interesting patterns and things you don't expect. Like this gold, this, this looks like gold lame, 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 whatever you say it, glittered. Okay. It was a dress. It was on a, a model in one of the magazines. And this was the other part of her dress. But the gold glitter was so pretty, I just cut out the glitter. And then, you know, rocks, and I even forget what this was. I think this was a lampshade that I thought was really nice. And then there's coral, and that was, I don't even remember what that was, but it was cute. <laughs> and I love flowers. Please tell me this is upside down. And I did. Wow, I glued my daisies on upside down. Cool. I didn't even realize that. See that? But I think I did it so that I could meet the corners. Okay, and I haven't really gotten too far into it because I don't have a whole lot of images that are like all matching. So I just kind of started. And then here's like my blue and white page. And there was a, a quote that I really, really liked. It says, Amazing Grace, don't let don't let it vanish without a trace. And they're talking about, you know, the extinction of the white polar bear and it's from the World Wildlife Organization. But I like that with the picture. Let's see if you can... There it is. And then I thought the whites and the blues would be really, really pretty together. And of course, at least this time, I glued my daisies right side up. <laughs> but I haven't start. I haven't, you know, done a whole lot with this. But I really want to. So I just kind of like that, that you can open it up and look and see exactly the images that you like. Not a whole bunch of junk and then, ooh, one pretty picture and then a whole bunch more junk. And I did go through and tear out several pages throughout here. Now, if you're using a composition book, I do have to, I do have to warn you, okay? It's made, it's one signature, the whole thing. And the pages are stitched in, if you can see that or not, but they're stitched. So when you tear out one sheet from one side, the other side's going to come out, just to let you know, okay? But I tried to um, take a bunch out just to kind of give me more room for my, my magazine images. 
So, I've been toting this thing around for a while. Kind of deep. It's got a bunch of magazine pieces that I've cut out and stuff like that. But, it's in my way like this. It's not a great storage, a storage solution. Now, when Shannon showed how she did hers, I thought that was perfect because I could set these right up on the bookshelf, you know, like doink, and put them right there. So I decided to add, use my very first one. There's 10 of these. <clears throat> uh, I got them from Amazon, and you can find them anywhere from, you know, $10 up to $15. And there's different styles. These are like, uh, uh, they're plastic. And they've got that weave through them. Looks like a nylon weave through it. And then there's the zipper. I like that because they're a little bit more sturdier. Okay. And they've got the zipper pull right here where you can hang a tag on it and say glue book or something, you know. And that way you kind of know what it is without pulling it out. You get 10 in a package. I got two yellow, two white, two pink, two blue, two green. So I'm going to set these aside. And I, I got mine on Amazon, I think, for about 10 bucks. I don't remember if I said that or not. I'm going to set those aside. Okay, now the big sheets I'm not worried about because I haven't really gone through and cut out the images that I like. So I'll just kind of stick them in there as is. I could probably put them in a file folder and it would make it a little bit easier to get them in and out. But I don't feel like getting up and getting one. You kind of get my meaning. But I did bring some baggies because you can cut words. You know, like this one says, get graphic. I don't want to lose them. That one's got a number, 35. Uh, more words beyond the jewelry box. Um, so when I come across a word that I might use, I'll just, that one says simplify. I like that one. And look at these really pretty little images. You know, it looks like a... Where is it? There it goes. Anyway, but I'll toss that in there too, because... Just because. Um, yeah, so... I'll keep my words together. Trim them out when I need them little pictures like find it use it upside down find it use it I don't need all of that so I want it to fit in my ziplock baggie so I'm just going to trim there feels weird cutting out words because it makes me feel like those serial killers or kidnappers that cut out um, words to do their ransom notices. But, oh well. I like that one. That one says, Cup of Cheer. Obviously, that's not going to fit in. So, I'll just separate them. And I can mix and match them later on. So, that's kind of what this is about. Okay, I'll turn those up in a minute. I want to get some of these littler ones out. That one says Velvet Dreams. Um, Visions of Sugar Plums. Just little words. But I figure when I get my words in here, it'll keep me... <laughs> and that one just says Don't Be Chicken. I like that. Let me cut that down. And put it in there. So, but this to me is a really great idea. Shine on. I love that. Get cozy. Um, uh, let's see. Now, I know you guys probably don't know this because I haven't brought it up once, but I'm a frog 
phonetic. Let's see. There it is. They've got to be whimsy frogs. I don't like, you know, just regular old ugly toads. They've got to be whimsy. And I've got a whole collection I'll show you sometime. Okay, and then that's holiday stuff. So I'm going to set my words to the side for a minute. Throw my trash out. Let me cut these down so they'll fit in there real quick. Uh, that one says summer whites. And I'll see, I like that. Those little images right there. See if it'll let you. I just like the colors together. So if you have a blank spot and you don't know what to do and this color this matches your color palette, pop it on there. Alright, so I'll set those aside. And we've got some bigger images. I really love outdoor backyard scenes. Um, one of my houses before I had a bunch of roses. Um, and I love those babies. I would actually transplant them and move them when I moved. They would go with me until we got to one place. And it was, I guess, I'm guessing the wrong season um, because uh, they didn't make it. Now look at all that lovely purple. Isn't that pretty? Mm. No glare. There we go. I just, I love that. So we put that in here. All right, then I'm going to grab another baggie because a lot of this is holiday stuff. Um, well, that one's not. But <clears throat> I have three favorites that I collect. And I don't have very many of them because, you know, a lot of times when I want to buy something, it just, I don't have the money for it. So it just goes on my wish list and stays there until, you know, whenever. But my three favorite things to collect are the Whimsy Frogs, Old World Santas. Okay, I love Old World Santas. Uh, and some of you already know, um, I'm a Nutcracker fanatic. I love Nutcrackers. I have no idea what that, where the, I'll just throw it in there anyway. That one looks like a strip of something. Okay, here's some more holiday, holiday stuff. Okay, now that's that would make a really good background on a page. That whole image. So I didn't bother cutting it up. I'll just slide it down in there. That one? Yeah, that one will fit. Look at that beautiful baby. I miss when my grandchildren were that little. I don't miss when my kids were that little. Okay? Because that would mean I would have to go through all that all over again. No, no. I miss the grandbabies when they're that little. So that way, <laughs> I can send them back. Let's see. Obviously, you can see here's my pink. So I'll grab another Ziploc and see what I can put in there. Try to keep... Uh, try. I try to keep you know, the color palettes together and and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like that is so pretty. I love that combination together. You see that black and that pink? Nope. Too much glare. There we go. The black and the pink. But I'm just gonna fold that and stick it in there. And whatever doesn't fit, I'll fold in. But the whole point is when I feel like working in my glue book, then I just pull out the envelope and I've got all my stuff right there. So not only can I put, you know, my magazine images, but I can tuck down my glue sticks, tuck them down there in the bottom. If you can see that, you know, I can I can just I can keep all this stuff together. An extra pair of scissors, maybe. Um, 
some washi tape, whatever, you know, whatever you fancy, whatever floats your boat. And when I get all this done, then this can probably, let's see, look how pretty that is. Look at that wreath. Isn't that gorgeous? But too big for my envelope or my, my Ziploc, so I'll tuck it in there. Okay, so we'll set that aside for a minute since I've got some more big images. That's a smaller image I can put. Now look at that. See that image? I love that. So, but let me get some of the bigger pages out of the way. Look at all the texture on that page. See that? Look at that. It's just beautiful. You know, and then we're going into the darks and the browns and the reds. And the silvers. There's the silvers. See, I haven't gone through all of it and organized it. We've got some greens here. Some light shades. Some dark shades. Um, oops. Let me pull these out. And there's some of my blues and silvers. Now look at that. That was really pretty. That was a magazine image of, it was an advertisement, I believe, for, uh, I think it was a rug. I'd love to have that rug. <laughs> I don't know about you, but see, there's another wreath with the greens and the golds. <clears throat> you know, just, okay, I lost a piece. There we are. Anyways, just an idea. Shannon just had the, the greatest, and of course there's got to be a chocolate page. I don't know about you guys, okay? It's got to be chocolate. That's just chocolate beyond compare. Absolutely. And then we've got some reds. Oh, I just got them. Oh! Stacy's going live in a few minutes. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? Okay. Hmm. And there's some more. I'm just going through and look how pretty those reds are. And then I got yellows and golds. I'm not doing a super job of, you know, splitting them all up and organizing them right at this moment. Because honestly, you know, <clears throat> the OCD idiot in me, I think, likes the organizing and the separating better than the actual, <laughs> the actual working with the product. So I can't help it. I was made that way. <sighs> Don't hate me because I'm ridiculous. Yup. So let's see if there's any more bigger pages in here. I think, yep, there are. But you see all of this all the way down to the bottom? I've even got paint cards, paint chips. Um, when you go to Lowe's or something and you go into their paint department and they've got all those rows of uh, the different color paint cards, they also have, Lowe's does, I don't know about any of the other places, but Lowe's has these little booklets that, um, that you get that have beautiful images in them. Look at all those wine casks, you know, and then they have color charts that you can mix and match and that contrast really well together. I just look at that. You see that vineyard and those purples? I Okay, so I'm weird. I can't help it. Like I said, I was born that way. Or how did Jessica Rabbit say I was just drawn that way? All right, well, no comments from the peanut gallery tonight. Uh, see, I've got my blues and my yellows. and <laughs> He said peanut galleries on meds. So he's a little bit, you know, stoned. But that's okay. But I love, I love these, these, um, card pamphlets. These are like five by sevens. You know, and you get the most beautiful images inside. So a lot of people talk about, you know, getting the uh, the card, the paint chips, 
what they're called, paint cards, and using those to cut stuff out with. And I'm like, heck, why not get the the pamphlets and and everything else? And okay, so I'm not even going to bother going through all of this and separating them right now. But you get my point. You know, like this was in one of those paint uh, booklets. See that beautiful? There's some pale pinks and some ivory over this rose. That is a beautiful image. And I haven't been to Lowe's in a while, so I'm hoping next time I go in, they'll have different ones that I can snag up. Now, Lowe's and Walmart have these, uh, they're big paint chips uh, from the paint company called Kills, K-I-L-Z. And they're actually sticker based. They have, they have a sticker on the back so that when you take the paint chip home you can stick it to the wall now it's a low tack sticky so if you're going to use it for anything then I would advise using extra glue but they work perfect in um, die cut machines they work great with punches and then you've already got your sticky on the back and now with most stickers you know we all usually throw the glue gun on or not the glue gun but the glue stick on them and uh, give it that little bit of extra oomph but yeah they've got these great big ones they're like shoot to uh, maybe eight by eight squares and you can get them in different shades I've got a bunch of them but they're in a folder somewhere well I know where they're just on my on my bookcase see here's another big one see look those are just coconut cookies coconut balls but look at the texture in the coconut. That's awesome. Something as simple as, you know, a magazine ad. Uh, my dad's probably in the other room going, God, she's weird. Oh, see, Valspar. They've got, they show how you do the dragging linen weave how to guide. They've got some beautiful textures in there. Look at, let me see if I can get this up there for you. Look at that texture on that paint job, how they show you how to do that. Can you see that? They give you little how-to guides. I just think they're fabulous. A lot of people don't realize, down here we can't get those wallpaper books, you know, the discontinued ones or whatever, because they want to charge for them. Like I asked uh, Sherwin-Williams, our local Sherwin-Williams, and... Uh, he wanted like $13 for ones that they'd probably throw away if I didn't ask. Now, I'm not a dumpster diver, so I really don't like the idea of, you know, climbing in a dumpster behind Sherwin-Williams or Lowe's or anything just to dig out one of these things. I'm not that desperate. So I will work, you know, with what I can and what I have. Uh, Olympic Paints also does another booklet. Look at the yellows on this with the oranges and the lemons and the limes. That's so beautiful. Now you see how much stuff I'm putting in this envelope? And the envelopes are are big enough. Um, let me look at the size. Because I remember her saying you can hold like 12 by 12 papers in here if I'm not mistaken. So it's like 13 by 14 or I don't remember exactly. Don't don't take that as gospel because I really don't know. So, but after all of this mess, and see, I'm still pulling out magazine articles or pieces of. And these things hold a lot. Now, Shannon said she keeps hers in a like a shallow box and she's got quite a few of these envelopes she makes a lot of mini journals and things like that that she just gets going on and then sets them aside until she gets ready to give them away or sell them or whatever and that would be perfect if you, if you gotta watch her video because she puts so much stuff in here let's see look empty all gone look how big that was this was a 27 cup reusable thing from the Dollar Tree. 
right? But yeah, so I'm moving that out of the way. And I'm going to put the rest of this stuff in here. My baggies with the holiday, with the pinks, with the words, and the extras that I just never, I didn't fold up or cut up or nothing. I'll just put those in there too. But I'm figuring maybe some file folders to separate some of this might make it easier to go in and out of. That's kind of in a, in a rush just to show you what to do. And I'll even throw in a couple of extra Ziploc baggies so I'll have them handy when I pull this out and I don't have to go digging. Okay, now with all of that in there. See, look at that. See how easy that was? Now, when I get more images, I can put them in here instead of having them floating through my craft area or my bedroom or I'll tuck them in a book and forget they're there until, you know, six weeks later or something along those lines. But it was just one of the project shares that I wanted to show you. And that way, like I said, right here, I can put a little tag on it and have it hanging off really cute and say glue book. So when it's on my shelf, like this, what do I want to work on today? Oh, let's see. And I'll flip through all my little tags. Oh, let's work on the glue book for a little while. And bang, it's there. So that was one of the project shares. Like I said, I learned that from Shannon Green. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm in a group. Um, and they're both kind of connected, and I forget which one is which, and I think they're collaborating on this one. But it's um, Creative Jewels by Emily. That's her YouTube, and then Divine Craft Diva, Divas from Ray. So those are the two, and the challenge this time is to make, we got to make three tags using napkins. So we got to make napkin tags. I couldn't find my other... Actually, yes, I can. Let me see, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use scraps, recycles. I'm not even going to use, um, you know, any cardstock like this right here. This would be a perfect tag covered in, you know, a tag with a pocket even. Okay, so we'll use that one. Let's see. No, not that. Let me pull up my recycle thing. Just some of the stuff I keep handy. Oh, okay. Nope, that's an envelope. That's not supposed to go in there. Okay. See, that came in the mail. It's a good, it's a good thingy. Um, there's another cigarette thing. Let's see what else can I use. No. Let's look at some of these. Look at that trash. This is great for like inchies or twinchies. I don't remember. I gotta see how wide they are. Yep, can use them for inchies. See, they're an inch, a little bit more than an inch wide, almost an inch and a half. So I can cut these down to inches. So, but I'm not doing inches right now. So those will go right back in there. And I think what we've got is probably good because I only need three tags. I've already done three, so I only need to do three more. See, cracker box, back of a cracker box. And this was an oatmeal box that I already cut one tag out of. Not going to be able to use that unless I make a small tag. Um, that's the back of a paper pack from the paper studio. Probably the back to this one. There's another cracker box. Holiday stickers. See, the, uh, the packaging is really great to use. And these. Let's see, this might be just a little too much right now, and I'm going to put these away. I'm going to go ahead and put these away since I've got these out. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do three tags. 
So let's. That one's about the. That one's about. Yeah, we'll use those. Alrighty. Now, first things first is. Well, let me get my paper cutter if I can reach it. Ah. Doink. Okay. We're going to trim this down. So let's say I make a three by. Three by five, maybe. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so we'll set that down in there. There's the five. And there's the three. So there's that's a three by five. And I'll put that in there. And we'll do the same with this one. Mm. five and three and these are again perfect to save for inches or bookmarks or whatever you want okay so I don't throw those out either so here's a three by five those are perfect and the last one this one's got tape on it I don't remember what for Okay, so let's go five right here. And I'll save that. And then we'll go three. Okay. Easy peasy Japanese, right? All right, so I've got three tags. The one, the side that doesn't have a lot of the images is what I'm going to use the back of, okay? But the side that has the yuck is what I'm going to cover. And I just had my silly napkins. Where'd they go? Oh, here they are. Um, I've got this one. And since it's St. Patty's Day, even though I'm kind of I'm going to be kind of late, I've got some green and gold ones, which I really really like. So, first things first, I'll set these aside. I'm going to pour some Mod Podge. Now, I make my own. You can get a big gallon of Elmer's glue at Lowe's, Menards, um, Home Depot, stuff like that. Do you remember what that cost, Dad? Was it like $12, $13? That big gallon of Elmer's glue we got at Menards. Yeah, that's about that right. Yeah, that's about that right. It's about $12 or $13 for a big gallon. But I bought it over a year ago and made what I needed with it and haven't touched it since. So I still have a half a gallon, you know. Um, but my own Mod Podge is two parts glue, one part water. Some people say it's half and half. I find if you do it half and half, it's too watery and it doesn't stick as well. So I do two parts glue, one part water. All right. So I'm going to pour some in my little container. Dollar Tree for a buck. Okay. Pour some in there. See, no mess easy cleanup and I can keep a big store of it just shake it when you need to use it uh, let me whoops I moved my camera let's move you back okay so now that we got that straight we're going to move these aside I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with these now this one I got a Tuesday morning. I love Tuesday morning napkins because you get more than one image on it. And with the napkins being the size that they are, 
I can get six napkins out of or six tags out of this one napkin, and I can even make the tags a little bigger. So let's see what we're gonna do. I kind of like this one better. Yeah. All right. You want to separate them. Sometimes they're two ply, sometimes they're three ply, and sometimes they'll sneak up on you and you won't know. But I'm pretty sure this one is just a two ply. Yeah. All right. Don't throw those away. Okay, because when you need texture on a mixed media project, these things are so thin, they're perfect. You can bunch them up and then just lay glue all over it and kapow, you've got texture out of this world. And yes, I said kapow. I'm in the generation that grew up with the Batman that did the kapow and the bang and the pow and the bonk and the zing and the zap and the, you know, the word things. Well, yeah, something like that. Okay. So, I guess we'll use this one. Figure out where I want to put it. And you always cut the napkin a little bit bigger than what you're going to cover it with. Only because your napkin is probably going to shrink when it dries with the Mod Podge. And you can still trim it off extra. But once it dries and it shrinks, it's really hard to add it to it. So let's see how this is going to work. Oh, that's in a dome. That's in a cloche. Uh, but I still like that one a little better. A little bit high, maybe. No. Okay, about right there. All right. So I'm going to get, I keep a separate paintbrush for my glues and my Mod Podge because I don't want to mess up my acrylic paintbrushes or my, um, you know, like my number 10s or the, the detail brushes. The glue will mess them up in a heartbeat. So I've got a small one and a big one that I keep just for glues, Mod Podge, um, gesso, stuff like that. So to start off with, I'm going to soak and, you know, put a pretty good liberal amount of Mod Podge on the tag. Now I've seen some people go nuts when they put their Mod Podge on top of the napkin. For some reason, I can't do that because my napkin will rip. So I have to be really, really careful. Try to pull out some of the wrinkles. But if you don't, that's okay because, you know, that's part of napkin art. You're not going to come, it's not going to be wrinkle free. I promise. And be very careful when you're rubbing over it with the second coat of Mod Podge because your napkin is wet, it's really, really thin, and it will tear. So make sure it's covered on all the edges. This way, you know, you won't have any lift when you go to um, cut off the excess. And now you see I'm not picking it up by the napkin. I'm pulling it up, bending it off of the paper that it's on. All right. See how good that looks? And I'm going to set it aside to dry. And on to the next one. Well, this one's... This one's right next to it. It's not the same, so I'll use it. <sighs> Let's see. And sometimes, if the image is pretty bright and colorful, 
you might see through it, but I'm not seeing through it there. So I'll pull this down a little bit like that to make sure I'm getting what I want on the card itself. Pulling it over just a little just to try and get the exact image I want on it. See? So again, liberal amounts of the Mod Podge. set that aside. Instead of laying the napkin down on it, I'm going to try something different to see if this works. See if I don't get as many wrinkles as I normally would. Now see how it's lifting right there. You see that? If you can or not, it's starting to curl. You see that lifting? That's why I tell you when, you when you're doing it to tuck in the sides, you know, tap in the sides so you don't get that lifting. But now we're going to flip it over. Now with it wet, you can still see some of the... Uh, stuff behind it but honestly it looks like it's writing that's on that one pot so oops see my fingers are sticking to it already so now we're going to do the tucking that's what I call it anyways but we'll tuck into the side of the tag just so we make sure there's no lifting and you don't need much Mod Podge to do that with just enough to get your napkin moving. Because if you force it, you'll rip it. And that's what we don't want. So I'll do the top. Okay, and then we'll do, whoa. Okay, now see that wasn't supposed to happen. So maybe I'll do it the other way next time. Now, I'm not picking it up by the napkin, obviously, because it'll tear. So I'll pick it up like this. Uh, I glued it to the page. That's okay, I'll switch pages in a minute. And I will let this dry. Now, they're going to curl, most likely. But when this coat dries, and you put the second coat on, it's not as bad. And yes, I always do a second coat. Uh, let's put you right there. Okay, now I'm going to switch. <clears throat> I use this to uh, trim out my tags, my first set of tags I made. So let's go, let's go green. Let's do this one because it looks like it'll match the others better. See this whole piece of lovely yummy? This green and gold damask. I love it. Alrighty. Honestly, I probably have one in my napkin box that's already been cut on, but I don't feel like digging for it. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut it out right here. Okay. Set that aside. Don't forget, we have to pull the plies apart, okay? Sometimes cutting it will help because you see these little bumps and dots and ridges? It presses the pieces together to hold them stronger, and sometimes it's really hard to get those apart. So I'll cut it, I'll cut down the center where there isn't any, and they peel apart a lot easier. See, so just like that. And I still keep that. Alright, so how are we going to do this? You can do it where you can 
it's kind of hard to do it if you want to leave the gold border because then you're doing it right up along the edge and you risk the chance of it shrinking. So I'm not even going to worry about the border right now. If I want a gold border, I'll take a gold marker, you know, or a gold paint pen after it's dried and I'll outline the whole thing. But I'm not going to do that. Not right now anyway. So make sure I'm on the right side. Nope, I wasn't. Good thing I checked. Okay. Liberal amounts. And, and just lay it down. Now see, I'm not touching it. I don't want to, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, the integrity. I don't want to mess with the integrity of the napkin. Compromise. That's the word. Don't want to compromise the integrity of the napkin that I'm splotching glue all over anyway. All right, so now we're going to do the tuck. That's what I call it. Right along the edge. Because even from on top, you can see where it's starting to try and lift. And we don't want that. We want a good solid napkin. Tag. <laughs> napkin tag. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Sorry if my hand is in the way. Sometimes it is what it is. Alrighty. Whoops. Let's lay that one out. Now. Do you see the difference? Um, let's see. Right. Not oh, this side. Right here. All that. You see how it's tucked underneath the edge? Just barely. But that helps the adhesion of the napkin and the Mod Podge stay on the tag. So, and it looks like I missed just a spot. Okay. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to put that in the water. I'm going to peel this up from the card, not from the napkin. So I'm getting underneath it. And the napkin stayed in pretty good condition. Now you'll get some napkins that are honestly not even worth the glue, okay? Because you barely pull the ply apart and it tears. You just, unless you want to use just the napkin for texture. Let's see, look at this one. This one's got, let me see if you can see it. Try and hold it up so you can. There you go. You see how it's got wrinkles in it? Especially down here on this side. See those? Now, you can take your paintbrush and wipe those out if you want. Okay, I like them. It gives them character. Okay, it makes them look older. It makes them look more used, more, um, I don't know. I just, I like the wrinkles in this one. So, we'll see what this one looks like when it dries. And since we're not going to be using any more Mod Podge, I poured entirely too much. Unless I want to do something else with what's left. Let's see. Uh, we'll put that right there. Okay, well, you talked me into it. <laughs> Let's use this. And we'll use the green since it's a big enough piece and it's all one shade. See that big old thing? Don't know what we'll do with it, but we'll have fun anyway. Let's measure. Let's see, can I get it out of this way? Yes, I can. Can she do it? Yes, she can. Yes, I have grandchildren. <laughs> I swore for about four years I went to bed dreaming and singing Wiggles songs. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't do Barney. Please, I am the president of the I Hate Barney Club. I apologize if that offends anybody out there. But Barney, a big purple dinosaur, 
would scare the hell out of me when I was little. I had a bad enough time with Bozo the Clown. We're not even going there. Yeah, Dad says he resembles that remark. I don't even remember who got me that silly Bozo. Was it you or was it Mom and uh, David? It was Grandpa? Oh, man, I thought he liked me. <laughs> yeah, it did do that. When I was about five or six, okay, my grandpa bought me this life-size bozo doll. Okay, that thing was as tall as I was. And, you know, we'd been to the circus before. We'd been to the Barnum, Barnum and Bailey Circus down at Cobo Hall and all of that back in Detroit. Oh, see, now this is going to be a double, looks like a double whammy maybe. Anyway, and, uh, you know, so I'd seen clowns that way, but they were goofy. They were funny. They were, you know, 20 clowns trying to fit into this itty-bitty car. That was funny. Not when they're as tall as you and they're in your closet. Okay, my grandfather bought me this life-size bozo doll, scared the living daylights out of me. I hid that thing in the back of my closet. And every night when it was time to go to bed, I would run like hell. I would, <laughs> no lie, I would sit there and um, I would look at the closet and I would look at the light and I would look at the closet and I would look at my bed. And I would try to see how fast I could get to my bed before the light actually winked off after I flipped the switch. Okay, that's how bad it was. And the light would be off, I'd be in my bed, and I'd be staring at that closet. And right about the time everybody went to bed and I could get no help if I screamed bloody murder, my closet would start to breathe. Oh yeah. I was five or six. I'm quite a bit older than that now and I still hate clowns the movie it from Stephen King I could read the book that was fine I could not watch the movie that was not fine <laughs> let's see oh we're gonna have to do both sides of this I think Yep. This still feels really thick. It feels almost like there's another another layer or another ply on there, and I can't seem to figure it out. It didn't feel that way on the other one. Maybe I got both plies at the same time. Uh, oh, well. So, yeah. Uh, not afraid of much. And it's not that I'm afraid of them. They just creep me out so bad I can't stand it. It gives you one of them shivers in your in your whole body that just doesn't want to go away. Makes you shudder and kind of creeps you out. And bleh. So yeah, me and clowns are not not really good friends. I will tell you that right now. Okay, now this time I am pushing it down with my hand only because it's such a big piece. But I'm being very careful because I can tell that if I push too hard or like spread it, it'll split. So that's why I'm only pressing. And it's going to have the wrinkles like the other napkin. Tag. <laughs> I keep thinking, oh, it's not a napkin, it's, or it's not a tag, it's a napkin. Alright, so now I'm going to... <sighs> soak the napkin, so hopefully it'll go through and help attach itself to the cardboard underneath. And a hint, to keep your napkin from ripping while you're... Um, oh, we got an air bubble there. Let's see if I can get it out. Uh, there we go. Okay. That wasn't a wrinkle. That was an air bubble. That was a Zeppelin. <laughs> okay. 
um, keep your paintbrush really wet. Don't try to dry brush it or if you think you can get just a little bit more glue off your brush, don't because that's when your napkin tends to rip. Been there, done that. But I just think this is so pretty. Okay, so I got most of the most of the napkin. I believe. Uh oh, now see right there. Oh nope, you can't see it. Okay, look right there. I went over it too hard, so I have to pull it back and leave that spot alone because I ripped the napkin just with my paintbrush. And we don't want to do that, so I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm going to make sure that everything else. And now we're going to tuck. So I'll put a little bit on the edge. And we'll tuck the napkin. You see how that's kind of tucking, tucking it right up to the edge? A little bit on the end. Okay, let's turn it. A little bit on the end and tuck it. Now there's another way we can do this and I'll show you after we get this one ready to to set off to the side and dry. I love doing napkin art. I really do. Um, there's another way. I'll have to get some saran wrap and my iron out but that might be another video. I don't feel like going through all of that right now. My table is a mess as it is. All right, let's see. Did we get a good tuck in on that side? Not really. Let me see. No, we didn't. Not really. Let's try a little bit harder. Not pressing harder, but, you know, concentrate a little bit more. There we go. Oh my gosh, I watched a video um, of Pink doing a version of Me and Bobby McGee. It was on, I think it was on YouTube. It was an AOL uh, Sessions, I think is what she called it. But I'll tell you what, she rocked it. She did Janis Joplin like Janis Joplin was sitting in her lap. I loved how that went. And she had that throaty voice and that na 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 na. Oh yeah, she slammed that. And I've never been a huge Pink fan. I just I don't listen to music that often. It's not that I don't like her. I just don't know much of her music. But for some reason, I caught this one. And it's partly because I like Janis Joplin, and I wanted to see how well a job she would do. I was honestly figuring she was going to butcher it. But she didn't. See, there we go. So that one, big one. Okay. And she did a fabulous job. So if you ever get a chance to look up that video, um, it's from Pink, and it's me and Bobby McGee. Oh, what's the other one I wanted to do? Oh, okay. Let me get another piece of uh, recycle stuff. And... Oh, where did my napkin box go? What is that? Okay, this will work. A uh, piece of my box that I buy my tea with. All right, now, that's all wet, so I'm just going to flip it back over again. And I'm going to use parts of this one. I didn't even use this one, so we may not. We'll see. And we'll use parts of this one. Now, if you really, really, you know, wanted to, you could gesso it. Um, you're going to glue over it anyways. I wouldn't bother. If you're worried about the color coming through, you can always take some acrylic paint, white, and 
I'm just going to use the smaller one. Actually, I can probably just use this. Put a little bit of Mod Podge in it and just swirl a little around. Okay, and that kind of tones that color down and it won't come through so much. I probably put way too much paint on this, but that's okay. Another thing, we have an extra envelope lying around, okay? You know, a lot of people like um, their envelopes decorated and stuff like that. You can always roll off your brayer on it or just swish around and just make a weird fuzzy cloud background or anything you want. Okay? And you've got the beginning of a really pretty, you know, background for an envelope. Now I'm using this one because I already cut a piece off. I wanted to use it, piece of this as an envelope in a junk journal that um, I made. So, but if you've got extra paint, you can throw it in a, a, a paint swatch book. Uh, Stacy at Pink Poodle Crafts. She's got one of those composition books that she uses when she has a bunch of extra paint. So just open it to the middle and just slap the paint in there and let it dry and she'll just keep doing it when she's through she can use all the pages for um, decoupage or or whatever so mm, I don't know what that was probably glue from the side of the box okay so I'm gonna let that dry and when this dries we'll be back and I'll show you what else I do with napkins okay alright I'll talk to you guys in a few minutes Okay, I'm back. Um, I went ahead and dried everything, not just this. I'd used my heat gun. So we could just skip that part and not worry about it. So, but this is what it looks like after I painted it. It didn't cover everything, but that wasn't the point. It was just to mute the background co covers. Colors. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, since I've got extra pieces here and there, and no, they're not they're not separated yet but I am gonna tear them and then I can separate them see like right there look at that perfect righty and tear it some more tear it tear it tear it Let's get the piece off of this one. All right, we'll leave that there. Okay, now I've got a piece left, but before I tear off any more, I'm going to start with this one. And actually, there's my scissors. I'll just cut a piece off of this so it doesn't mess anything else up. You know that I might use the rest of it in another project. Okay. So we'll put, because this isn't a very big piece. And then we'll grab this one, which already has the ply taken off. So let's take the ply off of this one. Okay. Let's see. Now, when you get some really good quality napkins, a lot of times they'll have two or three plies. And they'll tell you on the package if it's a two ply or a three ply napkin. Some you'll get that'll say one ply. If at all possible, <laughs> unless you really, really, really like the design and you plan on using them for decoupage or for um, any kind of crafting, I'd stay away from the one ply. Only because even after you tear, you know, the other plies off, this is still in really good shape. You know, it's still got, it's better made, I would say. Okay, so I'm going to just start tearing some of these. Okay, and for this one, do we have one cut? Nope, okay. So I'm going to cut a piece of this off. All right, I'm gonna set those over there. And this, I'll do the same thing. Now I wanna show you, somebody showed me this and I don't remember who. If you tear something towards you, 
okay, you'll see the white edge on the other on the other side. All right, so if that's what you like, that's cool. Let me see if I can get something a better a better example. Okay, let's use this. Okay, if you tear it towards you. See how you get that white line all the way across? And in some instances, that's what you want, okay, because you're tearing it toward you. But I found, okay, if you're tearing it instead of up and towards you, if you tear it down and away, look, you don't get that white edge. You just get the ripped edge. So you see that? This is tearing it towards you, and this is tearing it away. Just a little FYI. I have no idea why that brought up, but you know, I learned it. I figure I'll pass it along. Why not? Yeah, why not? Okay. So we're going to tear this apart. And we've got quite a few pieces here. So this is another way to do napkin art. Ah, this is just to the newspaper. <laughs> well, I guess my Mod Podge works, huh? Okay. So this is the piece we're using to cover. All right. Now, if you're covering a larger piece, I suggest doing um, small sections at a time. I wouldn't cover the whole piece in Mod Podge and then expect it to stay that way. So I'm going to do this section right here. Just right here. All right, I'm going to set that right there. And I'm going to haphazardly lay these, and I'm going to let them hang off the edge. Again, because of shrinkage. Now, okay, Stacy, don't say it. I don't want to hear it. That's what she said. Okay, so I said it. Um, we'll do that. Okay, now, since it's on top of this one, we'll add a little bit of Mod Podge. And we'll just kind of lay that down on top of it. Okay. Then we'll get a piece of the dark. And let's see. We'll go. On. Let's do this. There we go. Okay. And now we'll go down here. And we'll just lay that right there. So you can decoupage with just about anything. All right. Now here, I like this. I want that right there. So I'm going to put that right there. Now I can move on a little. Since I've got some down here, I'll go ahead and just do that. Now remember, I'm leaving some hanging off the edge. And usually if I don't have a ripped side, that's the side I'll hang off the edge so that, you know, the whole thing can stay pretty much organic. And if I can't, then I will cover up the ripped edge or the unripped edge with something else. And whoa, what was that? See, kind of like that. There we go. See, there's a straight edge right there. I don't want that straight edge. So let me see. I'll just put a little bit there. And I'll run that right there. You can lap and overlap and do all kinds of funny stuff. There we go. Let's see, we need some green over here. And I'll put that so the edge is kind of, the straight edge is off the side. Uh, 
Mm, excuse me. <laughs> Remind me all to tell you one time about my hiccups. Well, I'm not doing anything now, so I'll tell you now. Um, hiccups are psychological. Yep. Have nothing to do with air trapped in your diaphragm or any of those other little, you know, medical mumbo jumbos. Trust me, I know this for a fact. Okay. I was about 12. We were living in uh, Washington, Michigan. I was doing dishes. I had the hiccups, something fierce. These things would not go away. I tried water. I tried holding my breath. I tried all kinds of things and nothing worked. Nothing. Until my dad came along. Okay. So I'm standing there. I'm hiccuping. My guts are hurting because I'm hiccuping so long. Won't go away. I'm about in tears. He comes up behind me. Now, mind you, I didn't hear him come up. The water's running. I'm doing dishes. I got a washcloth in one hand, a plate or something in the other, and I'm <laughs> just scrubbing away and getting more and more aggravated because my hiccups won't stop. He came up behind me, grabbed me under the arms, like, boom, like right at my rib cage on both sides, roared like a lion. Scared the holy bejesus out of me, okay? Washcloth went one way. Plate went one way. I turned around, sat down on the floor, and started crying. That's how bad it scared me. But my hiccups stopped. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I was, we were, uh, I was about 12, yeah, okay? Didn't matter where I went in the world. I got married when I was 18. My husband was in the military. Dad said, you know, if you need anything, just call, whatever, blah, blah. Uh, at the time, I think it was like a six-hour time difference uh, where we were at in um, Detroit. So I got the hiccups one time there. I called Dad. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning his time. I went, <coughs> Dad? He goes, yeah. I went, thank you. He goes, no problem. Click. So, every time my body even thinks about hiccuping, all I have to do is think about my dad, or my dad will have to say something from the other room. He'll go, what did I hear? And I'll stop, and I'll go, huh, thanks, Dad. No problem. I swear it, on my mother's grave, on my grandma's grave, that is the God's honest truth. My kids thought I was lying until they experienced it when my dad moved down here. I might hiccup two times. Dad will say something, pow, they're gone. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So, that is my scientific professional opinion. That hiccups are absolutely 100% psychological. And nobody in this world will ever convince me otherwise. So that is my story on the hiccups. So now my body, instead of hiccuping, it'll do this hiccup belch burp thing. And then I'm done. Because I live with dad now. So I, I, I'm thinking it's my body going, I'm not even going there. <laughs> no lie. So, but yes, that is my theory on hiccups. And it worked. And even even my friends have had to see it in hap happen, you know, with their own eyes. And they have come to agree with me that, yes, I am correct. And I have to tell them. And there was any doubt, you know. But on top of that, life is grand. So if by chance you ever hear me start a hiccup on, 
you know, while I'm doing a video. And a lot of times it'll happen and I won't pay attention. I'll just start <laughs> and dad will go, Kelly. Like, oh, thanks. No problem. And you very well may see it on a video someday because it happens all the time. <laughs> Well, not the hiccups anymore because, like I said, I think my body is absolutely terrified. It just gets a whiff of dad and it's like, oh no, oh no, hiccups go away. Hide, quick, wait till he's at least at the store. And then nine times out of ten, well, I'd have to say about eight times out of ten. All I got to do is think about them and they're gone. So, okay, so that was, that was just decoupaging napkins. So it doesn't have to be a one-time deal. Now, when I was uh, drying the others, while I was waiting for this to dry, or this, yeah, whatever, I realized, okay, now I want to show you something. You see how it looks like the, uh, the napkin has shrunk towards, towards the tag itself? That's why I do the tucking, and that's also why I make it bigger than what I'm trying to cover. Because it did, it shrunk. That you can see how it stuck to the sides. Can you see that right there? Uh, about right there. Yeah, right there. And I did find out, was it this one? Nope, it's the other one. Okay. This one I apparently put on too thin of a piece of backing. So what I'm going to do, since I made this great big one, Still not completely dry, but it's pretty much dry. I'm going to back this with this. Okay, so we know. Let me cut this so that I can get it in the cutter correctly. And our tags were three and a half, or three by five, right? That's what we decided. So. I'll trim this off. And I want to show you something because I just noticed it on this one. All right. There was some lifting. Let's see. Can you see it right there? See how that right there came up? I didn't tuck it very well. All right. So that'll probably be the edge that we use on this and it'll get glued together again. See, this one just folded itself over on itself, but this is still kind of damp, so I'm not going to cut that side. So I'll cut it and trim it. Okay, this side is still is dry, so I can deal with this. Oh, where did my cutter go? Yep, it's under all the napkin flies I pulled off. So let me get this. All right, was it this one? Nope, it was this one that was kind of wiggly. So what I'm going to do is, did I have it this way? Ah, it don't matter. Okay, so I'll put it this way. So I need a five inch, wait a minute, how big is this? Five inch, that'll work better. Okay, so it's five this way, it'll be three this way. So let's do the three first. That way I can fit it all into the machine. The cut cutter. Okay, so we'll go three. There. And we'll set this aside. And what end did I want to cut off? Oh, let's go there. Cut that end off. Oops, nope, we need five. We already did three. Okay, and again, we always test this. It's exactly one inch, so that would be perfect for inches. You see that? Let's see if you can tell. Put my hand behind it. There we go. One inch. So I'll set this aside. Now we've got a 3x5 and a 3x5. 
So obviously, before I can put this one on the back of that one, I've got to trim this. And that's not going to let me right there because I tucked it really, really good. So let's trim. But when you tuck it, it, you take out that last little bit of air that's in there. You see how it, right there, how it just, it meets together so perfectly. It's a lot less likely to split apart later on. Okay. So now we've got a three by five napkin tag. Are you going to bed? Oh, I forgot you're old. You need your sleep. <laughs> and you also took meds. I know. I'm supposed to take mine, but the crazy people haven't caught me yet, so I don't have to. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, I know. Do you know that that? Um, wow, what, what's a word we can use without saying his name? Okay, my husband. My separated husband. Do you know he absolutely hates that? He cannot stand it. He says it creeps him out so bad when he hears somebody do that. What? They're coming to take me away. Ha ha, he he, ho ho, ooh, to the funny farm where life is good. You know that one? <laughs> I didn't know it. Yeah, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I just gave my dad some ammunition. Oh, that's great. <laughs> he did not realize that. Okay, I'm married, but you don't see a ring. And this is not a wedding ring. This is a friendship ring with footprints on it. You know, the poem footprints um, from Jesus. So, but uh, uh, I'm married, but we've been separated for like, uh, let me see, August will be... 13 years, I think. So it's a little bit over 12 and a half years that we've been separated. He's been living with this girl, lady, woman. I mean, and she's nice. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't have any hard feelings for her. Um, my feelings, any ang angst or anxiety or anything else is towards him. Because uh, we got into this situation like this because he kept accusing me of doing things I was not doing. Now, with that note, <laughs> I've been single since we separated because to me, I'm still married. Um, it may not mean as much to some people, okay? And yes, he's been living with the same woman since we separated. But I took my vows a lot more serious, I guess, than he did. Now, I'm not a martyr. I'm not, you know, some goody-goody saint. Nothing like that. I haven't even dated. But, uh, I can say it does get lonely sometimes. But at the same time, I'm not worried about being by myself. A lot of women... A lot of people, even men, not just women, cannot stand to be alone. They can't. They have to have somebody around. Um, I know uh, some people who are so, uh, what's the word, serious about having somebody around that they will keep somebody in the wings for just in case. They could be with the person for 20 years, but they'll have somebody in the wings just in case. I know a couple people like that, and it's sad. It really is. Now, I'm, I'm a pure-blooded American woman. I'm not afraid of, you know, relationships. I'm not, you know, I don't have any silly hang-ups and all of that. The only hang-up I have is the fact that he won't sign divorce papers that lets me be free. But I'm not I'm not looking for anything either. 
you know? So, I'm, it's like, I'm not in any hurry. It's not like I've got somebody waiting in the wings, because I don't. And if I didn't, and I die the way I am now, I'm happy. I'm happy with myself, and I'm happy with who I am. And nobody can take that away from me. Nobody. So, when you hear me say, you know, that person I'm married to, or, you know, the guy I was, I am married to, but we don't see each other anymore, or, you know, him, or whatever, that's kind of the story behind that. But on to funnier things, because I really don't like talking about, you know, sad things. And to me, it's a sad thing. But it's okay, because <laughs> Dad and I always tease each other back and forth, and I say, well, you're my daddy. You know, you can buy the things I need. You'd be my sugar daddy without the benefits. <laughs> it doesn't work that way because I do. I try to, I do my best to pay my own way. Yeah. I'm not fabulous with money, but I'm not. See, he's laughing. I just, I just admitted I'm not great with money. And he still laughs at me. What? Oh, he says that's an understatement. No, he's right. Um, I married when I was 18 and have always had somebody else taking care of things. And I never really learned to take care of it myself. My first apartment I had, I was, what was it, 44 years old, 45 years old, was the first time I'd ever lived by myself. I was 45. Okay, I'm 48 now. Guess where I'm living? With my dad. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it. There are things I still have to learn. Huh? Yeah, dad says he should have moved to Iceland. You know, Iceland is green. It's Greenland that's frozen. Yeah, but I would have had a place in the Bahamas with, or with a gay who said Iceland. <laughs> I think he likes me. No, he doesn't. He wishes he had a boy. I think that's why they named me Kelly, because Kelly is a is a uh, a gender neutral name. In fact, I had a crush on a kid when I was in elementary school, and by God, if he ever saw this video, which I highly doubt, um, his name was Kelly also. So that would have been you know kind of funny if we ever hooked up, and got together. But obviously, this was elementary school. My crush carried over into high school. But he was with somebody, and that was cool, and I never, I was really shy in high school anyway. So, okay, so we got the start of two tags. It's been an hour and a half. I'm not going to bore you any longer with working on napkin tags. And I can embellish them, you know, either in another video or in another time. Um... Let's see, I don't have any except for this one, and this one is still wet. So, I don't know what I'll do with this one. It might be a great background for a frame or something, and then put something across the top. I don't know. But, it'll dry, and I'll figure something out. And if not, it'll go in my recycle pile, and I'll use it for something else. Add some texture paste to it or something. I might actually do texture paste with these guys. But I haven't made up my mind yet. But, because I'm a woman, I'm authorized. I don't have to make up my mind. Ugh. But, on that note, I'm going to clean up a little here. And I'm going to wish you guys a very happy weekend. And if it's not the weekend when you're watching this, well, have a great day anyways. And have a great rest of your week. Um... Remember, I will tell you this if I can remember, after every video I make, find the humor in life. If you don't, life sucks. It really does. Um, me and my friend Angela were talking on the phone last night, and her and I were laughing so hard. We had to actually hang up so we could go to the bathroom because I was laughing so hard I was going to pee on myself. And it was just, you know, real life stories. And I don't know. If you don't find the humor, 
you're going to die very hateful, um, a very hateful person or just not have that much joy in your life. You know, and I don't mean funny as in pranks where you're going to hurt somebody or somebody gets, your property gets damaged or something like that. You know, if that's your bailiwick, then, you know, you, know, you ought to know better. But it's humor in everyday simple life. And on that note, I'm going to go. But remember, if you like my video, please click like. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to be subscribed, because um, you never know what's going to happen on my videos, I swear. I think one day my dad's going to come through with a Bermuda hat on, Bermuda shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, and he's going to do the luau. Okay? I got pictures of that, by the way, and if I can find it, I'll show it one day when he pisses me off. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry when he makes me mad. It's good blackmail material. But if you like, yeah, anything goes on my videos. If you like click like. If you want to subscribe, click subscribe. If you want notifications of when I'm going to do my next video, click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. Okay? Um, be nice to people. Okay? Have fun, but not at anybody else's expense. Okay? Thank you, and God bless.